2024 first started, I felt like I had a pretty good idea of what my writing year was going to look like. I was really excited to have some time off from writing during the summer. I planned on reading all the books on my TBR. I planned on breaking out my sewing machine. I thought I would get back into drawing and I just generally really looked forward to enriching my other hobbies while my book was with other people to read. And that's not exactly what happened. <laughs> um, something happened that I did not expect at all. And that was I got hit with a new book idea. And it was an idea that not only could I not let go, but it was an idea that would not let go of me. <laughs> and this idea hit me like a force of nature and all of a sudden I felt like I could not do anything except write this book and so I find myself here in July um, we're writing a new book I'm very excited about this idea I've been calling it Harrow's book it's a dark romanticy uh, I probably won't say very much more about it because I don't know a lot about it yet, to be honest. A few days after I got this idea, I also got an email from a company you probably have heard of called Readsy, and they asked if I wanted to try out their writing course, How to Write a Novel, and tell you all what I think about it. The timing for this was really, really just perfect. <laughs> I was riding the high of that new idea. It had been keeping me up at night for like the past three or four days. I couldn't get it out of my head. And here came the perfect excuse to drop everything and write this book. I needed a new idea to audit the course. You're meant to be drafting a novel as you're taking the course for about three months. It's going to be a while before I get everything back from my beta readers on Project Gemstone. So that's going to be on pause for a couple months either way. So yeah, I pretty immediately just went, well, I guess I'm drafting this book. Rest might have been nice. Working on other hobbies might have been nice, but I'm really excited. So let's talk about what I'm actually going to be doing in this video. The course is 101 days long. It starts in July and I'm going to be taking it July, August, and September. I'm going to be writing the first draft of this novel, Hera's book, um, and the course has you aim for 75,000 words by the end. Um, which amounts to about a thousand words a day with some days off. It is kind of like a less intense NaNoWriMo, but for a longer period of time. So I'm very interested to see how this amount of writing feels to me. Um, when I'm drafting, my normal writing speed is about 10,000 words in a month. Um, that feels well balanced with, you know, my other responsibilities, work and life. And this might be just a bit of a step up from that. Um, but it's not just the writing accountability. So the course itself is structured in videos. So you have a short video lesson to watch every day. This comes with further reading. This comes with writing exercises. And um, oh my gosh, it comes with weekly live streams and author chats, a whole cohort of writers that are taking the course with you. Every weekend, folks can sign up to get paired together to do feedback critiques. Um, and the instructor also gives critiques as well. So there's a lot to pull out of this course. The instructor, uh, I had never heard of before. His name is Tom, Tom Bromley. Um, but man, his resume is really impressive, okay? <laughs> um, he has pretty much worked on every corner of the publishing industry at one time. Um, he was a commissioning editor for Little Brown. Um, I believe he was a publisher at an imprint that he started under another traditional publishing house. Uh, he has ghostwritten. Wow, I think having access to that kind of professional is really, really exciting, especially considering the fact that he's going to be critiquing our writing. As far as who it's for, I definitely think this is going to be for someone who feels strongly that they want some sort of formalized writing education experience. The price of the course is definitely not gonna be accessible to most people. 
um, it is $1,250. So it's up there in the sphere of college courses. If you were to go pay tuition at a university, I wonder if the price would land somewhere in this range. And I think some point during the series, I am going to go compare this back to how much it would cost to take a writing class at my old university. I am definitely approaching it through that lens. I am going to be comparing everything against the writing education that I had. Do I think this is better? Do I think anything's missing? I obviously think it's going to be a huge value to me. Like, I just want to learn. <laughs> um, and that's the main reason that I wanted to take this course, apart from forcing me to write my book, is also, I just want to take the course. <laughs> I just want to get better at writing. Okay, just to be absolutely 100% clear, because I don't think I made this clear, I'm taking the course for free. I'm not paying for this. I wouldn't be able to pay for this if I was interested in taking the course and I didn't have this opportunity. So I just wanted to like make that 100% clear. My writing degree taught me a lot about short fiction, um, taught me a whole lot about mid-century writers, um, and not always a lot of contemporary writers. It was very literary fiction focused. Um, we were not allowed to submit genre fiction. Uh, when we were applying to the program, and it was very discouraged to bring genre fiction to our workshops. So that kind of stuck me writing short stories of the literary variety, and I enjoyed that. I snuck in a lot of speculative stuff, but it wasn't what I wanted to learn how to write, which was novels and fantasy novels at that. Um, and so I hope that this could fill that gap. And I don't know what writing programs are like nowadays, but if they're still like mine was, and I think they probably are because it takes a long time for academia to change. And I feel like writing programs have to keep up a certain air of legitimacy, which uh, maybe fantasy novels they feel like doesn't lend. Um, maybe this is a better option for young writers who were like me and thinking about going to college and spending thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a writing education. And, you know, if this course uh, is a better option, I would love to suggest it to people to say, go get a business degree, go get an English degree and take this course on the side, take this course over the summer. And my hope is that you'll get everything good out of it that a university degree might provide. So that is my long-winded perspective. That's what I'm bringing to this. I want to hear about novel writing. How do you structure a novel? How do you uh, design characters to hold up the weight of a novel? Plot, structure, pacing, all of that good stuff. That's what I want to see out of a novel writing course. Even if you're not in the market for a writing course, I hope this is fun to watch. Um, I'll be fast drafting. You can watch me stumble through that. It's been a long time since I drafted a book. So yeah, thank you so much for coming along on the ride. I'm going to save a lot of my overall thoughts on the course for my last video, um, but I'll definitely be updating my impressions as we go and I'll share as much as possible about what I'm doing how it fits into my regular day. I work a nine to five job. So doing a very serious course like this and writing a book at the same time sounds like a very intimidating amount of work, I have to be honest. So we'll see how this fits in to my day to day life. We'll see how the writing goes. We'll see how the course goes. And I will keep you posted.
All right, welcome back from our coffee work date this morning. It's technically the first day before the course even starts, um, but we have been given some like preparation tasks and modules to go through before day one even begins. And so that's what I was working on this morning at the coffee shop. Um, we have five lessons to go through. They're called the five Ps. So this morning I did a pitch um, protagonist and plot, like genuinely so pleased, <laughs> another P, um, genuinely so pleased with those modules. Like they were short, not intimidating, um, but they were exactly what I would have hoped would be in those modules. I love that the first thing they asked us to do was to make a pitch, like a one sentence elevator pitch for the story that we're gonna be working on because I think that's so helpful, so important on just boiling down what the actual conflict of the story is going to be. One of the very first things that the instructor stressed in the protagonist module was how plot and protagonist are symbiotic and how they should be intertwined. And really plot should be born out of the changes of the protagonist. Um, and I feel like that was such a big lesson that really took a long time to like click into place for me in my writing journey. And I love that that was something he made clear up front was that plot and protagonist are not two separate things. They are really one thing woven together, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Obviously, all of this we're going to be diving in so much deeper during the course. This is just very, very initial kind of like basic concept uh, introductions, but um, I love that the angle of the plot preparation was not on, here's how you outline, here's what you should include in your outline, like not really much of that. It was more try to spend time figuring out what you as a writer need in order to get through your draft. Do you need a little bit? Do you need a lot? Kind of try to figure out where you fall on that spectrum and he kind of explained that many professional writers fall on that spectrum between plotting and pantsing and it is completely valid to be on any part of that spectrum he kind of phrased it as security versus freedom which i really enjoyed so you have to find for yourself whenever you think that you're ready to start writing the book and i just really appreciated hearing that from an instructor. The other big piece on plot that he touched on was causality. Causality. And I love that this was right up front. This is something I felt was missing from my writing education. And I think it's so, so important. So I wrote this quote down in like big, bold letters. Um, a story should be stitched together by a series of causally linked events that can only be told in one particular order. Read that again. Can you go through all the scenes in your book and say, because X, Y happens, because Y happens, Z happens, and go through your whole book like that and find the causal links between each scene. There's, and just, I'm really like giving the most bare bones <laughs> of everything that was included, but every point that was brought up in these modules so far, I'm just really, really loving it. And obviously like not a lot of this is new to me as not quite a novice writer, but at the same time, the way that all these lessons are presented, I feel like I'm getting a lot out of it. Like it's cementing a lot of lessons in my head. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm not done with the prep sessions yet. Um, I have two more to go on the the P's. I have point of view in place. And so these are, again, just like preparatory introducing main concepts so that when we actually start the course tomorrow, we all have, number one, the project we're going to be working on. We have ideas of our characters. We have ideas of our story arcs and a lot of foundations laid. So we can start writing tomorrow. <laughs> and it triggered me to remember what I like to do when I'm trying to get to know characters. And that is the 16 personalities test and what I call the Lizelle Sambury character sheet. These two things together, um, I love. And I don't know why I wasn't thinking of these things until I was doing these modules this morning. And now that I sat down and did those, I feel so much better. 
I feel so much better. I feel like I really know precisely who my main character is. And having that under my belt, I'm like, oh yeah, I can, I can write her. Like I can write this book. I can write this book. <laughs> All of a sudden I feel prepared. I feel like I'm not in this alone. I feel like I have help. And pff, I was not feeling that way this morning. I was feeling really intimidated and like, oh God, am I really ready to do this? Um, and I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like with just a little bit of work and intentional time, I have a lot of foundation laid and I could really be ready to write tomorrow. hear that bird that is going nuts outside my window right now so it's my second day of the readsy course i got up this morning very excited to watch my next lesson um and i <laughs> just pretty much spent all my writing time watching the lesson and i also discovered the community tab where i can talk to all the other people in the course with me and had a bunch of messages from our instructor and so i just got like really absorbed in exploring all the nooks and crannies of our little like circle community so as far as the manuscript itself we are about 1800 words in oh my gosh a lot of that i had from a big brain dump moment before the course started where i just could not stop the itch to write <laughs> We are making our way into some new zero draft territory starting today. <laughs> Once again, I am just having to reset my brain and get used to drafting again and reminding myself that like, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Feeling the plot inconsistencies, all the loopholes, all the things I'm not doing. And like you forcibly have to make yourself move on from those things when you are doing a first draft. Um, and that's something the instructor said in the, in the lesson this morning. He literally opened the whole thing by stop editing, keep moving forward, resist the urge to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. I have a beat sheet pretty much set up. Um, I'm writing in Dabble. I really love zero drafting in Dabble and I've used the plot grid um, which if you watched my dabble tour, you kind of know how that works. Um, and I use that to set up my save the cat beats. And then I write what is going to be happening in each beat. And I pretty much set it up to just have like a document dump for each beat of the story. And I'm not even really breaking it up into chapters or scenes. I'm just like each beat has its own document. And I just... <laughs> right messy i i'm just gonna keep swimming i'm i'm swimming like a duck where i'm chill on the top and paddling furiously under the surface <laughs> um we've been reading the beginnings of novels as examples which i have enjoyed i really like the selections that he's making and so far all the selections are from novels they're not from screenplays movies tvs tvs tv shows <laughs> which although great for talking about story it's kind of like teaching someone art without teaching them a specific medium and getting to know your medium is really important and the course is how to write a novel not how to tell a story and those things are different so i appreciate when courses use books as their example even if we haven't all read them i think it's still really helpful to pull paragraphs out and see why they're working in words that's my tangent i'm enjoying the lessons a lot so far and I'm excited to actually write today. So let's go. It's been a minute. Um, we've got a lot to catch up on. It's now week two of July. I'm so happy to report that we ended week one on 5,102 words. 
I pretty much did no writing while we were on vacation. So that was the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And with all that included, I still managed to do my 5,000 words. And it felt easy. The writing part feels a lot more attainable, which I know it's only been one week. Maybe I should shut my mouth before I embarrass myself. The beginning has been laid. We've had a couple of chapters now. Um, my characters are interacting and revealing some secrets and I'm having a grand old time. I mean, I'm definitely, again, having to like fix my mindset of like, this is not going to be any good. This is bad. We're info dumping left and right. Like information is just falling out of my pockets. Like I'm a person with an overcoat that's just like dropping items as they're walking. <laughs> Like, that doesn't even make sense as a metaphor, but maybe you get it. But I, I don't know. It's just, it's really info dumpy. I'm making stuff up as I'm moving along. My next writing session is going to be probably the catalyst sequence. So we've basically gone through all of our setup chapters. I've kind of explained my character, the world she's in, the position she's in, and kind of her before snapshot, if you will. And I'm very excited for things to start happening, for things to start going off. And as far as the course goes, I continue to be really impressed by it, I have to say. Um, in addition to the video lessons that we get every day, we also have reading that we can do to kind of support whatever was discussed in the video. Um, we have a couple of writing exercises we can do if we wish and lots of reference material that link out uh, for further reading as far as like craft discussions. And like all of that has just been gold so far. I love how much we're getting as far as resources. If I was a new writer, this would be just a gold mine, essentially. I've absorbed so much writing craft and things like this through osmosis, through like seven or eight years of being on the writing internet, of watching author interviews, looking up authors talking about their work progress on podcasts, reading craft books, and it feels like this is the way to distill that amount of learning into a short time. <laughs> um, so I'm continuing to be really impressed by the resources and by the instructor. Um, so last night, Monday night, uh, we kicked off week two by doing a live editing session and I enjoyed this so much, so much. The instructor took writing samples from our cohort, short, like I think probably 700 to 1000 word samples, and he line edited them live on screen um, with, you know, a pen to underline and talking about why he would change certain things. And I truly love that because I feel like line editing is a huge weakness of mine because I just haven't had the chance to practice it very much, to be honest. I've been in this mode where I'm practicing finishing drafts, finishing novels, learning how to revise novels, and I haven't really gotten to like that draft four, five, six phase where you're doing those really careful line editing um, passes. I don't quite yet have that skill of being able to point out immediately what is throwing it off. And he can do that. And he could translate what that feeling was. There was one sample that was a conversation between two characters. And he pointed out that throughout the whole conversation, every line of dialogue was followed by some small action of the characters or some body language or some description or some interjection. And so that was breaking up the flow of the dialogue and kind of dragging the prose down a little bit. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if I could have picked that out. I would like to get brave enough to submit a sample of my own. I'm very scared to do that, but I, I do feel like I should do it. <sighs> okay, that was a really big, long update. I don't think I have anything else to say. It's just we're at 5,102 words and it's time to write another 5,000. So here's week two. I always say that over the course of a novel, something of yourself will end up in there. I think writers can sometimes feel that's a slightly frightening prospect, but actually that's what fiction is. It's about self-expression. It's about saying something of all these sorts of elements together that create this 
assignment, the style, the feeling, the voice of what it is that you're writing. Ultimately, that's down to something about you as a person. In the previous session, we looked at the difference between liking a character and caring about a character. One of the elements that helps in terms of creating characters, either are likeable or are someone to care about, is that element of some sort of character flaw. So rather than the reader instinctively feeling they should feel this about that particular person or about that particular character, a good writer will actually leave the reader a little bit more... Okay, where is my coffee? I have my coffee. Good morning. We're here in week three. You can see I got my dress for my brother's wedding. I'm very excited. It looks like a tutu. <laughs> um, it makes me feel like I'm back in my dance costume days and I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, and please excuse the hair this morning. I went to sleep on wet hair. never know what you're gonna get with that so this is what we got and i ended up falling pretty short of my writing goal for the week um instead of the 5,000 words i got about 2600 i have no idea where what my final word count is i probably should have figured that out like before i started talking <laughs> hold on <sighs> this also happens when i try to vlog before i do my do my coffee drink my coffee Jeez. Okay. This is what happens when I haven't had coffee in the morning. All right, let's look at my dabble. All right, so, so far in the book, uh, we ended week two with 7,626. We were supposed to be at 10, so I have some catching up to do this week, and I need to end this week with 15,000. A lot of thoughts about this book so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm having so much fun just not caring um, after, you know, working so diligently on Project Gemstone um, for so long and really trying to bring my best every time I work on it. Um, there's something so freeing about writing a book and not caring if I'm doing a good job. <laughs> I am going through my beat sheet and I'm kind of very curious how long this book is going to end up being. Um, I'm still in the catalyst sequence. Um, I think that will be probably two or three more scenes. Um, but I really wouldn't be surprised if this ended up being quite a short draft for me. Um, my zero drafts in the past have been about 60 to 70,000 words, and I don't know if this one is going to make it all the way there. <laughs> um, it very, very much feels like a true zero draft in the sense that I feel like I'm writing an expanded outline. Um, I have, you know, a beat sheet in the very, very top level outline that I'm working with. And it feels like now I'm writing that outline in scene. And there's a lot missing. <laughs> um, there's a lot that I haven't figured out. No subplots really whatsoever. I'm very much just focusing on the romance plot and writing that through because that's what is interesting and fun. So I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up in like the 40, 50,000 word range and I'll have to decide where to go from there. Maybe I'm writing a novella. <laughs> Maybe there aren't subplots. Maybe there isn't that much more to this. Um, but either way, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going to try and keep up with the writing goal until I run out of outline, I guess. <laughs> so this weekend, I am traveling yet again. Um, I have 
a lot of words to write and it would be great if I did it before the weekend because <laughs> we will not have time. <laughs> so I'm going to a friend's wedding in New Hampshire. So we will be flying up, seeing family, going to that wedding. Um, and I know it will be a very refreshing screen break. We have a lot to do to prepare for that time away. So wish me luck. It's been a weird day. It's been a weird Saturday. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm still home. I'm not on my trip as I thought I was going to be. Um, I was supposed to go to New Hampshire last night and then the world broke. Our flight got canceled and the internet is on vacation. So <laughs> no flights out of Atlanta for the foreseeable future. Um, and it's been really odd. I'm very sad that I'm not in New Hampshire, that I'm not attending the wedding I was meant to go to, um, not seeing my family. It's just a little bit of a weird, dreary day. Um, but the plus side is I took Monday off for this trip, which is not happening anymore. So we have a long weekend here at home. We can definitely make the most of it. I'm definitely planning on A, a lot of cleaning. <laughs> and be a lot of writing. This morning and afternoon, really, Luke and I focused on, you know, doing our grocery shop because we're actually going to be here. Um, and then we deep cleaned our kitchen and our bathroom, which felt amazing, but I am exhausted. <laughs> like, I don't know if anyone else has the post cleaning malaise where I just, nothing is so exhausting to me as, as deep cleaning is. We're just under 9,000 words and I'm supposed to be getting to 15 by Sunday, tomorrow. <laughs> and I have some coursework that I need to catch up on as well. Um, yeah, this week, to be completely honest, I started receiving um, beta feedback on my other project and that derailed me quite a bit. My attention was elsewhere and I definitely got very distracted away from Hera's book. We have three days, today, Sunday, and Monday, to ourselves to make the most of it, really get into the middle of Hera's book if I can. Again, it's feeling like it's definitely going to be a short novella size book at this point. I really just want to write as much as possible during this long weekend. I want to end this vlog on a really good, satisfying run. Let's log in. This week, our focus is character. So on Monday, I did watch the caring and liking lesson, which I thought was good. I need to catch up on the lessons on flaws, inner tension, change, feelings, and character. Those are all about 10 minutes long, but that sounds like a nice way to recover from cleaning and also kind of transition into a writing mindset. So here we go. chat just ended it was really wonderful that was the first time I've gotten to go to one live actually so I'm glad I got to do that at least once while um, I had the day off from work today just getting to hear authors talk about their process is so 
so useful and I really enjoyed hearing this author speak. She was um, at one point talking about the fact that like novel writing is a confidence trick is what she said and it's constantly fighting your inner panic that you won't come up with something <laughs> that you'll hit a wall or a problem that you don't know how to fix and very often it's just a matter of time and composting as she put it like I don't know if I've ever heard a writer say yeah sometimes I really panic and I thought it was really <laughs> nice of her to admit that that it's still scary and it's it can still be a fearful process, um, but it's one that you can work through. I think we're going to end the vlog here. Um, so I'm going to continue on with week four. I probably will do some more writing tonight after dinner. So I'll put up on the screen here my final total for the draft so far in my first four weeks of working on Harris book. Here's where we landed. I think I did pretty good. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm very happy with the amount of progress. I think if I had just been like noodling on this by myself and working on it here and there while I was waiting for Project Gemstone to be read, um, I definitely wouldn't have gotten this far this quickly. And I'm really, really enjoying the opportunity to take the course. Um, I'm learning a lot. It's reminding me of a lot of good lessons. If you already know that you're interested in the course and you wanna join the next cohort in September, um, I do have an affiliate link, which I will leave down below. Um, if you feel like I helped you come to that decision, feel free to check out the link. No worries if not. I do get a very small commission from anyone who signs up on the course, which I'll put back into the channel. So there you go. We have a lot more course left to discover. So I will save a lot of my thoughts overall for uh, September when we've gone through the whole thing and had the whole experience. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that. Um, good luck on all of your writing projects. I hope your summer writing is going so, so, so well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.